Reed, the first NFL player to kneel alongside former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick during the national anthem, believes that his demonstration of his social views is preventing him from getting a new job. Reed took to Twitter saying, quote, the notion that I can be a great signing for your team for cheap, not because of my skill set, but because I've protested systemic oppression is ludicrous. If you think it isn't, then your mindset is part of the problem, too. He then replied to another user saying, GMs aren't the hold up, broski. It's ownership. People who know football know who can play. People who know me know my character. As for Kaepernick, who remains unsigned after being out of football last season, he had a 90-minute throwing session at a Houston area field this week. News and images of his workout spread quickly, and on Twitter, Kaepernick said of the session he was, quote, turning up the heat. We turn up the heat on first take right now. Yeah, we do. Will Kane's here, and we had a lot to unpack. Good to you. Good to see you. All right, so we just heard about Colin Kaepernick working out, and Eric Reed, who was ranked the 20th best available free agent before the signing frenzy started and is now the fifth-rated player left, according to ESPN.com, and both are still without teams. Stephen A., are the NFL owners right to not sign these players because they protested? Yep. Sorry to say. Um, I wouldn't do it, but that's because I'm an African-American. I'm a black man. I care about our community. I care what's going on in our community and their sacrifices. Uh, if they need to be made in order to bring attention to it, then so be it. Uh, you know, Colin Kaepernick did what he did. Uh, we could have remained silent on this. It wasn't in my best interest or that of a plethora of African-Americans to speak up about it because you never know what the potential fallout could be. But uh, African-Americans throughout this nation were willing to stand up and say that we applaud what Colin Kaepernick was doing. It was perfectly within his right to do it. Uh, but we weren't oblivious to the potential ramifications that would come from it. And neither Eric, should Eric Reed be or Colin Kaepernick. This is the National Football League, with the exception of Shad Khan, the uh, owner for the uh, the Pakistan, the Pakistani owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Every owner in the National Football League is white. They are white. They are billionaires. When we talk about racial racial oppression, inequality, police brutality, it doesn't have anything to do with them. When you combine that with the fact that Colin Kaepernick's protests and those who followed his lead uh, and th with their protests had very little, if nothing, to do to the end with the NFL because they weren't protesting against the NFL, it is perfectly within an owner's right to sit up there and say, so my bottom line is being impacted. Why? Because of something that has nothing to do with us? We can't find a different way to go about doing this where this doesn't affect me? An owner has the right to make that call. We may not like it. Uh, we might even find it reprehensible to some degree. But they have the right to do it. It's very predictable what they're doing. We know why they're doing it. And nobody should be surprised. The owners were losing ratings. They were losing revenue. It was affecting their bottom line. They were not the ones being protested against. And what they're saying is, Excuse me, we are not going to be about the business of alienating a fan base out there who impacts our bottom line because of this any longer. It's very predictable what's happening. It's very unfortunate, but it's predictable. It's not surprising, and you can't blame them for taking a position. Yes, you can, and I do, and I don't think it's okay. And those same arguments, Stephen A., were once used by private business owners in the South who refuse to serve African Americans. It's my business. I live in a community where that will That's be a horrible frowned upon. Comparison, it's not even go necessarily ahead. it's not it's not even necessarily I think it's exact it's apt. It's not even necessarily no, my even personal close. choice. But in this community, but in this community, I can be it will affect my business. Those same arguments were used. I don't think they were good then. I don't think it's good now, particularly when you mentioned no. Out of 32 owners in the NFL, zero are African-American. And the reason zero are African-American is because of the very same systemic oppression, this, starting with this country's original sin, the same systemic oppression that Eric Reed states he is protesting. I have a real problem with owners then claiming that they are making business decisions, particularly when... There's no evidence that definitively proves that the presence of those players will negatively affect their business. There's as much evidence that I've seen that the response of the NFL and the owners to the protests, in other words, and the counter-protests, the protests of the protests, 
are as responsible for declining ratings or revenue as the protests themselves. So then it comes not only to the kind of intuition the owners have about what may or may not be affecting their bottom line, but how that lines up with their own personal preferences, which speaks to the fact that it's an essentially all-white male club to begin with. Now, the idea, well, okay, I will leave it there, Will, because there's okay. plenty more to say. Okay, well, I'll say this. Um, you want to talk about what's something there's no evidence of. There's no evidence that right now Eric Reed is being blackballed from the NFL. There's no evidence that his protest is actually keeping him unemployed. I mean, the free safety market, the safety market in general, is moving absolutely slowly. I mean, Earl Thomas is out there, available for trade. T Tyron Matthew has been cut. He's not signed by any anybody. Kenny Vaccaro, he's available. Morgan Burnett, he's available. So let's just slow our roll on whether or not he's actually being boxed out of the NFL till we see the safety market move a little bit. That being said, I do think he's going to have troubles. I do think he's going to have trouble finding employment. And Stephen A., where I'll push back on you is this. And I think you will. Uh, here's the thing, Stephen A., I don't even know that we disagree. I just think you're being a little bit contradictory. It's not a black or white issue, it is a green issue. And so what I mean by that is this, are you saying that anyone who doesn't protest is somehow not caring about the community? Because you see, you say, why, the, the NFL is full of white owners, and white owners don't care about this issue. And so they won't have any reason to make the sacrifice to their bottom line in, in signing Eric, uh, Eric Reed. But the truth is, it, th there's players who are not kneeling, there are black players who are not kneeling. Not everyone who hasn't participated in this protest doesn't care. There are other ways you can contribute. So an owner can say, you know, I'd really like players to stand up during the national anthem, but I'm also going to support your cause in other ways. That's being unfair to say, if you don't somehow support this protest, you don't care about the issues. Green is the well, I'm issue. I'm not being unfair at Green. all. I'm answering, the issue. I'm answering the question. The question yeah. was about the owners and whether or not they had the right uh, to sign or not sign players who are protesting. So I was answering the question yeah. directly about owners. And we First agree all, it's a be green very, issue. Very clear. Uh, uh, what, uh, uh, that's basically what I'm pointing to. Let's be very, very clear. Throughout American history, uh, with a, a plethora of causes that affected minority communities, there were individuals from the white community who stepped up and were supportive and as a result helped spearhead movements towards progress. So I'm certainly not trying to imply that that does not exist. Right. What I am simply saying is that at the end of the day, if you are an owner, it is about the green. It is about your dollars. It is about the bottom line. And if your mentality is that those protests are compromising that bottom line, then excuse me, you're going to make you're going to make uh, uh, you're, you're yeah. going to address situations and, and you're going to do whatever you have to do to alleviate that problem. To get to Max's point, this is why the comparison doesn't hold water. If the players were protesting against the NFL, you have a point. When you bring up history and folks were protesting and we couldn't sit at the same restaurants and drink from the same water fountains and go to the same bathrooms and things of that nature. Those things and the things that were being protested were civil rights that were being violated. In this particular instance, Colin Kaepernick and the players themselves were not talking about the NFL. So I'm only making the point that if but you're an owner... Analogy. You're saying you're not talking about me. You're not pointing to me being a problem. So why should my bottom line be affected? They have a right to ask that question. One, one for each of you, and it's been some time, so I actually took some notes. One for each of you. Stephen A., in the first place, the analogy I made about, or, or I'm saying the same arguments were used in the South by private business owners who said, I choose not to serve African Americans, some of them because, oh, it's not me, I don't think, I, but the community in which I live, it would affect my bottom line. The comparison I'm making is the argument that since something affects your bottom line, you, are, you can treat someone differently. You know, and that is the argument I'm making there. I thought it was a bad one then. I think it's a bad one now, and Will, there's, you're yeah. right, it's not a perfect correlation, but there's a large overlap along racial lines on this issue. And I want to address your saying that the, that the owners are saying, well, we'd like you to stand for the national anthem. It, that is de facto saying you must stand for the national anthem, because if you don't, you won't be employed, and that will not be perfectly correlated with your contributions on the field. Max, do you and realize... for those who say... Um, do you realize yep. the logical Go flow ahead. of what you just said, though, Max? See, Eric Reed chose to protest. His protest comes with accountability right. and consequences. The accountability and consequences that owners say, I don't want to hire you if you protest on my job. So my, the, the, uh, your direct correlation, Max, is I not only have to allow you to protest, okay. I this have to, to employ you. 
while you protest. No, that's, no, wait a minute, crazy. wait a minute. It's not a, it's, it's not, it, you can't technically even call it a protest if it's not mandatory that you participate. If you're making it mandatory, even in a de facto way, I have a problem with that because as we've had this, in, uh, this debate on this show, you are saying, essentially, you must parrot my political speech. And Will, if the answer to that is, since when is standing for a nation's national anthem political speech, where else in the world would this even be an issue? And my answer to that is, nowhere. That's why we have been the greatest country in the world, because nowhere else would that be an issue. Only here, where you don't have to stand for the national anthem at, as, uh, at your place of well, employment, you're, you're, if but that you have means to make you're up your parroting mind. the owner's political speech, which I believe you are. Yep. Okay. But you have to be able to make up your mind, Max, because you're sitting here talking about the NFL, but there's very little you said about the NBA when the NBA has mandated that you stand for the national anthem, whereas the NFL has strongly encouraged it. There's a difference. We sit up here mm -hmm. and we literally have sat on this show and we have applauded the NBA because the NBA, in concert with the Players Association, came to some sort of a resolution. Why did they do that? Because this cash cow that seems to be proliferating beneficial to both sides, all of a sudden they said, let's not mess this up by alienating segments of our population. And that's sad that this beast, that's you know what, Stephen So if that's, if, if that's happening, if that's happening, what's wrong with insisting that the NFL strategize in a similar fashion since it's clearly worked for the by NBA? By the way, I have... I don't think the NBA should do that. I don't think the NFL should do that. I'm not sure they're actually allowed if it was challenged. But let me just say, it's sad commentary about our culture at the moment when the prevailing winds, and, and, this, and it's, you know, maybe it's always been this way. In fact, it's been worse at times, obviously, that the NBA probably, in my view, feels the need to do that because they were perceived and are perceived largely as a, quote, black league and therefore have to go, have to do things that demonstrates, but our sensibilities are very mainstream, everyone. We do not want to alienate anyone. And we know that there is a large overlap along racial lines on this issue. If Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reid had not protested, I think we can all agree that they would be playing in the National Football League. I will leave it on that yeah, note. Yes. Bottom line. Well, Kane, great to have you with us. We'll see you on radio later. Yes, Will Kane will. Show, 3 to 6 Eastern, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Coming up, guys, everybody has their eyes on Tiger now that he's looking good, even Vegas. But Stephen A., he's not having it. What will it take to get him on board? And LeBron and Ty Lue got into it on the bench during the Cavs' loss last night. Could this tension cause bigger problems for the land? Stay tuned for that combo.